Not from our class. Certainly not a bit of a Stockdale name. Uh, what? Tony made you believe he was a poor man? Well, I wouldn't exactly say poor. I mean, he had a really nice apartment in San Francisco, and he always took Rachel to the best places in town. <laughs> did he love her? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that he did. Then you know, Tony wouldn't have married her if he hadn't loved her. I'm trying to understand why he went below his reading and married a simple woman like that. You're being rude. Very beautiful woman. So is Mara. The difference is being social status, class, and wealth. Oh. What does your father do for a living? Well, um, he used to work for the state, and um, well, he got in a faction and he hurt his leg, and, and so now he's retired. Tony must have been nuts. attention to this, okay? So don't interrupt me. Uh, Remember I told you I had a brother? Yeah. Well, he's not really my brother. I know. Victoria told me that she had a son from the first time. That's right. Ever since I met him, when we were little kids, he just hated me. He used to do things, you know, bad things, make it seem like I did him so that he wouldn't get punished and I would. I wanted my parents to hate me. Why? Why would you want Victoria and your father to hate you? I don't know. He was just cruel, I guess. He was? What do you, what do you mean he was? He treated me like a peasant. He always did. The problem was, the old man loved him. And when he died, he left everything for him. Hotels, casinos, restaurants. Business, everything. It's not that my sister Camille and I were left penniless. We always got to stay at the estate. We had to depend on his charity. Anyway, a few months ago, my brother was involved in a business deal. And he double crossed this man. And this guy swore that he was going to kill him. And he tried several times unsuccessfully. 
my brother and I were the only ones who knew this. And I knew that this guy was going to keep trying until he succeeded. And that's when I had this idea. Tony, you're really scaring me. What are you talking about? What idea? Rachel, Tony Stonke was dead. Victoria is my mother. And my real name is Max Hauser. What are you talking about? You have to help me. Right? You have to continue to pretend that you're Tony Stockdale's widow. And in a few months, when everything cools out, we can get married for real. Are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Tony was going to get killed sooner or later. There were way too many people that wanted him dead. And you know what would have happened then? Everything you see, all of this, would have went right into Camille's hands, along with her worthless husband Clark, so they could squander it away. That's all changed now. It's all yours. You're Tony Stockdale's widow. And all we have to do is bite our tongue. I'm sorry. sorry. How could you do this to me? You have been lying to me this whole time. You killed him, didn't you? No. I swear I didn't kill him. Well, I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. Shut up and listen to me. Tony didn't deserve to live, and he was going to get axed sooner or later. All I did was take advantage of the situation. No, the only thing you took advantage of was me and my family. How could you do this to me? I took advantage of my love for you, and I never forgive you for that. Marty, I need your help. Your sister wants to go home tomorrow, and I don't think that's a good idea. I'd like you to help me convince her to stay. Sure. Why? Well, darling, Rachel is Tony's widow, and she has some obligations here. It's going to look kind of funny if she just abandons her home. This is her home. Well, I'll do my best to try to convince her not to leave now. Thank you. If she does leave, who knows what people are going to start thinking. I mean, there are enough rumors flying around because the marriage was a surprise to everybody. Now, darling, I'm sure that you're very decent people. You're just not used to the pressures of living in the public eye. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. No. Besides, you can't leave. The estate hasn't been settled. Tony owned all of this. And as his widow, she's now the owner. <laughs> Listen to me. Sure, don't touch me. I didn't kill him. That's possible. The problem is you lied to me. You lied to everybody. How could you do this to me? I mean, if you knew somebody wanted to kill him, why didn't you do something instead of planning what you did? Maybe his death was an accident. Oh, a very convenient accident to you. What if he didn't die? The fact is, he did die, and we have to move on from here. I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I'll tell Victoria and everybody the whole truth. If you do that, Rachel, I will make sure that you and your family go to jail. Jail? Why? Because I can very easily make all of this look like it was your idea. Yours and your families to get a support system. They'll just assume you planned the whole thing. And if the investigation shows that there was any foul play, all fingers will point at you. They'll just go ahead and think you planned the whole thing. Have any of your friends ever met me? No, you are always careful to avoid them, aren't you? But you do have an apartment in San Francisco. Uh, the apartment's not in my name, and no one's ever seen me there. What about the judge that married us? That was easy. I paid him off. Look, I'll deny ever having met you. 
And if the investigation shows that there's any foul play involved, all fingers will be pointing at you. They'll just assume that you planned the whole thing to get it to court. How could you do this to me? You can't do this. It's your word against mine and my family. Exactly. Now, you and Marnie don't count. Your father's a drunk and sells stolen goods. How do you think that's going to look? Now, listen, if that's the way you want to go, that's fine with me. But let me tell you what I'll do. I'll go right to Victoria, and I'll tell her the signature on the marriage license is a forgery. And then we'll go to the police. And who do you think they're going to believe? You, your sister, your father, or me? Listen, you're going to have an incredible life. You're going to be rich. Very rich. You're never going to have to worry about money the rest of your life. I can't do it. I can't and I won't. I'm sorry. But there's no other way. Martin. Oh, Martin. Hmm? I thought it was about you. Who is this about two miles? Please. Walk those two miles. Stop any car, any car. Me, doctor. How do you live here with nothing? No electricity? No phones? No... I already told you I am a poor man. I live off the air, eh? Okay, just get me a doctor. I'll give you more money than you've ever seen. Yeah, 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 wait. I don't care about your money, mister. Besides, Pablo should be here soon. Just hold on a little longer. I don't have... I don't have a little longer. Please. Take me to a hospital. My family will give you money. Just get me out of here. Rachel. Rachel. Hey, Rachel, where are you? Hey, where were you? to make an effort to pull yourself together. Look, I know you loved him. I do. I was talking with Victoria. She said that you can inherit all of this. The house, the business, everything. I mean, doesn't that make you the least bit happy? I know how you feel about Tony's dad. But Cody is not dead. What? The man that I married is not dead. The real Cody is dead. I married Max, Victoria's son. Yes. Did you tell him this? What are you talking about? He lied to me, Mommy. He's not who he said he was. And now he's using me for all of this. When did you get back? Just now. He was so young. And so good. It's fun. 
sweet. It's not sweet. out of water. Camille had the lungs and some clothes so they'd be presentable. What about the media? Well, we said we'd known her before. And did Rachel say the same? Yeah. She did. What else was she going to say? How did you find out? Well, the marriage is legal. <gasps> I went to their home and met their father. Living room, there was a picture of Tony and Rachel. But you have to be reasonable. You had nothing to do with this, and this can all be yours by circumstance. Don't be an idiot. We have everything we've ever dreamed of. Look, okay, I know how you feel, but I just think that if we go through with this, we're just as guilty as Max is. Listen, Rachel, I'm not going to jail for something that you did, okay? I'm not going to jail. Don't say anything. I'll say that you've gone crazy. I'll say that we've never seen Max before in our lives. But don't look at me like that. I'm not going to jail because of something that you did. And neither is Dad. Contact with my family, Victoria, Charles. They'll come get me. I don't know what to do. I almost convinced the truck to come over, but it just turned around. <sighs> Did you offer my watch? <laughs> I was going to, but I figured you would just take off and leave me standing there. It's my watch. It does not matter. But he said he would call the cop and if he saw one, what else could I do? Help me up. Why? Help me up. <sighs> now what? Why you help me to the road? Huh? You got to be crazy. The road is two miles away. Hey. <laughs> that must be Pablo. I hope to God it is. Come on, sit there. Sit there and wait for me then. Don't move. Don't run, don't run away. I'll be back. Wait. <laughs> Oh, 
good morning, ma'am. Hi. You're up very early. Good morning. I'm asleep. Not too much going on, I guess. Yes, I understand. We shall all miss Tony very much. James, can I ask you some questions? I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Well, I don't know, ma'am. Don't worry. It's just between the two of us. Go ahead, ma'am. Did you like Tony? Oh, we all liked Tony very much. He was such an understanding employer, a good man. Was he kind? Well, you would know better than I would, man. As far as I'm concerned, he was very kind. A wee bit of a temper, mind you, but a very good man. Do you have a photograph of him somewhere, Jerry? I left mine back in San Francisco. Oh, no, man, no problem. Follow me. I never really liked to have his picture taken. Oh, here's one. This was taken a few months ago. Not a very good one. At a conference. But I'll check around the house and see if I can find something else. Okay, thank you, Jay. Um, please, wouldn't you let me know when you're ready for breakfast? So that I can alert the kitchen staff? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You introduce yourself as somebody else. You make me fall in love with you. And then you lie to me about it? To top it off, you want me to be part of this plan? And you want me to be happy about it? Well, you don't know me very well. We didn't know Tony. Rachel, he was a bastard. You know what he used his money and his power for? Destroy lives. I've seen him do it before. I've seen him do it with women. Yeah, well, you guys are a lot alike. You know, I can always just say that the Tony Stockdale I married was a different person. That it was a case of mistaken identity. That would be fascinating. You obviously haven't seen today's paper. No, I haven't. You're plastered all over it. Now imagine, if you will, if you came out with this mistaken identity story now. The press would start digging and digging and digging. God knows what they tell them. I've talked with my mother and Camille. They've decided to say that they met you before, that they knew you. Besides that, I talked with your father. He's going to back me up 100%. When did you talk to my father? Why are you doing this to me? I already told you, I told Because I love you. If you loved me, you wouldn't do this to me. You wouldn't threaten to put me and my family in jail. Just think about it, okay? Calmly, rationally. In a few months, this will all seem like a nightmare. Rachel, you're going to have everything you've ever wanted. Your father and sister, too. And then soon, we can get married for real. I'll never marry you. Uh-huh. 
your nose pulled it off. I knew I could count on you, Marnie. But it's just Rachel that I'm concerned with now. To make that whole bail story disappear, is there? Don't bet on it. I don't want to, Marnie, but I will if I have to. I'm sure you'd rather be here than in jail, right? I tried to talk to her last night. I'm I'm sure she's going to go along with it. She has no other choice, Max. I mean, I know she doesn't want to go to jail, and the thought of jail makes my skin crawl. Well, I just hope you can do it. Rachel has to understand that I had nothing to do with Tony's death. It was an accident. Mm -hmm. I just seized the opportunity and made my move. Right. Now imagine this. Imagine that Camille and Clark gets all Could be ours. That's what I mean by ours. I mean myself. Rachel. Yeah. That is a shopping spree in Paris. <laughs> good morning. Oh, good morning. I see you've met my son. Yeah, we just met. Where's Rachel? Um, I don't know. She hasn't come out of her room yet. I think she must be sleeping. Uh, just as well. All this commotion couldn't be very good for Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, James. I'll be the Should be back to normal uh, in a very short time. I suppose I can go home, sir. I don't see any problem with that. Do me a favor, then, huh? Yeah. Go back to my house. Get someone over here to pick me up, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, before that, there's a police investigator waiting outside, and, you know, he wants to ask you some questions about the accident. I don't remember a thing. I suppose you can ask. Go ahead, send him in. Okay, sure. Doc. Uh, yeah. Thanks. No problem. Rich. Rachel. No, not my mother, you idiot. Tony's wife, Rachel. She left about an hour ago, sir. She said she had to go to the airport. One of the drivers took her. Well, who the hell said that she could leave? I didn't approve that. I don't want anyone leaving the grounds anymore until you clear it with me. You understand that? Now call Captain Garcia at the airstrip and have him gas up one of the planes for me. Got it? You're a moron! <sighs> Yes. I'm gonna get her back. I want you to 
want you to go to your bedroom. I want you to lock the door. Anybody wants to see Rachel, I want you to tell them that she's asleep, that she's sick, that she's dizzy, any damn thing you want to tell her, but she's not to be seen. No one is to know that she's not there. Do you understand? Yeah. Follow the rules, Marnie, and everything will be okay. Got it? Got it? says her sister's still sleeping. Finally, she didn't sleep well at all last night. More than I can imagine. She seems like a very nice girl, doesn't she? Yes, ma'am. She asked me this morning for a photograph of Tony. She'd forgotten to bring one. What an awful way to die. Stockdale residence, may I help you? Uh, good morning. I'm calling from the hospital in Iwala. Mr. Tony Stockdale is here. Mr. Tony? Just a moment, please. Ma'am, they're calling from the hospital in Iguala. Apparently, they have Tony there. What? Yes, ma'am. Hello, hello. This is Victoria Stockdale. May I help you? Oh, thanks. Uh, this is Dr. Martinez calling from the hospital in Iwala. Mr. Tony Stockdale is here in the hospital. He was brought in. How can that be? There wasn't anything left, though. Uh, I'm not sure, ma'am. The fact is, a couple of workers brought him in. No lie? Well, our examination has not uncovered anything. Uh, some bruising and a slight confusion. He wants to go home. Uh, you know, I tried to keep him here a couple more days, but he wants to go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. We'll be right there to pick him up. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Tony's alive. Tony's alive. That's a great man. Yes. We've got to go pick him up right away. Where's Matt? He meant early this morning, ma'am. They call him at the office. Yes, We've got to go right away. Yes, ma'am. But <laughs> you never suspected anything? Tony always had lovers, but they were from our social circles. Not a woman like that. Besides, all his lovers were just that, lovers, nothing serious at all. Why did he hide the truth from her, you know? I mean, why didn't he tell her who he really was? I don't know. You know, I wonder what that woman had on him that made him marry her. I mean, maybe she's even pregnant or something like that. Think so? I just can't think of any other reason why Tony would marry a woman like that. I mean, she's so utterly beneath oh, him. And that's right. Mrs. Stokedale says we're going to come up to the house at once. Tony's alive. The guy is going to take him up and get a bus. Love it. He's alive? Yes. He's alive. He survived the crash. The doctor says he can come home. I've already sent Charles to go and pick him up. Tell Rachel she'll be very happy. I'm going to go tell Max. Hey, 
Can you open up the gate? I'm sorry, I have strict orders from Mr. Houck. No one's to leave without his permission. Please, you gotta let me out of here. Uh, I can't. Look, if you don't let me out of here, I'm gonna start screaming or something. You gotta open up the oh, gate. Okay. What you have to do is to stop Gail's permission. If she lets you go, I'll open the gate. She can deal with Max later. should be back to uh, normal in a few weeks. <laughs> Other than that, how do you feel, huh? I heard all of it. Nothing too serious, though. Well, so, does this mean we can take him home like a buckle? Yes, he can live. I just get some paperwork together, and you can bring him home. Can we what the gods are? talking about. 